Joe Rotella is here and he has brought an entire fairy village. Now this is so magical, Joe. You know, you find them in Michigan and San Francisco. In England, there's a village that they have 200 fairy doors where a whole city has moved in during the night. Oh my gosh. So I think that's what the cool thing here is. When you go and look in the woods, you might just see you know, trees, but if you build them, they will come. So <laughs> go out and put a few fairy doors and you can make magic. I'm gonna start with some scrap lumber, actually okay. that I have from birdhouses left over. And I've taken my rotary tool and turned it into a router. And so a router is something that cuts grooves. Oh, okay. And different bits have different shapes of grooves. I put in one that's just kind of, you know, straight. And I've got a guide on this that helps me groove straight lines, but we don't want straight lines. Fairies, you know, they're very organic, right? So we want some flexibility. I was going to say, here. fairies definitely don't move in straight lines. No, they're no, squiggly. No, no, of course. So I'm going to fire up my rotary tool, which is now a router, and I'm just going to go in and let's make some grooves. So this, what are the grooves for, by the way? They're well, for the doors that yeah, we're Yeah, I'm trying to simulate wood panels. Ah. And now I could glue individual panels together, but you know, the fairies aren't that fussy. So okay, okay. because we're, the houses are the logs and we're just making the door part of it. Yep, so I can't draw a great circle, but these <laughs> don't have to be perfect circles either, right? This is now all the canned food in your cabinet is useful for something other than eating. There you go, so I've got my door shape. I could use a scroll saw or a jigsaw and go around it, but what I like is that I've made this jigsaw stationary, so it's real easy for me to just turn it on. Now the on switch is back here. Oh my here. gosh, I've never seen that before. I've always, the, one of my problems with using a jigsaw is it's so shaky, I get really nervous. Yeah, yeah. But this and this seems is more like, like sewing. In fact, there's a foot pedal that I can turn it on. You're a clever dude. So I'm just gonna get started here. I'm gonna go straight across. And now I'll cut my two curves. Of course, you're wearing glasses to protect your eyes. Absolutely, but otherwise I'd use safety glasses. I would like a window in my house. Well, who wouldn't want you know? a window? And so the easiest way to do that is to start with a circle. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, centered. Looks to me like you're using a tube to trace this time, but you could also use a pill bottle or anything. like. Or, or a compass, people still, if I could find my I was going to say, if people still use film, you could use a film canister. So I need some pilot holes, because I have to get the, drill, the saw in here somehow. So I've got a rotary tool connected to my transformer, and I put a bit in it. You just have to make sure your bit makes a hole big enough to fit your blade. Ah, okay. It sounds so, like you might have made that mistake before. I make a lot of mistakes. Mistakes are the best way to learn anything. I always say it's not a mistake, it's a learning opportunity. And I've got a block of wood underneath here just to, so I don't go into our tabletop. That's also a mistake I think many people have made before. So let's see, did I go all the way through? This one needs a little more love. There we go. Awesome. So now I have some pilot holes, and I'm gonna go from the center out to the edge to make some relief cuts. You could try to go all the way around with the jigsaw, and it's doable, but it makes me a little nervous. I like it if pieces kind of fall away as I'm going. So relief cuts are just basically straight slices. Yeah, yeah, just from that center. kind of out to the edge, and then I'll just rotate it, and maybe one out here. And that's where this foot pedal is so handy. Well, it gives you a free hand in a different way. And this, you're a sewer, right? So yeah. it's kind of like sewing machine, right? It is, although, of course, because it's a blade, you can't really go backwards, right? Well, you, have, you can only face in one direction when you're to cut. Correct, correct. You can go backwards sewing. 
or you can go backwards to back out. Oh wow. Look at that. That is so cool. And I love the idea of making the jigsaw stationary. Did you just put it into a, a grip, like a vice grip? Yeah, this is a vice with a ball bearing. So you could actually rotate it even all the way down and it could be held up for different tools, like if I'm gr grinding or milling. But I just love it with this combination. I think it's a cool idea. Now, this is a little rough. Okay. And so if they put their little nose through, Aww. I think it's splinters. So I could use a sander on my rotary tool. And this is comfortable, but it's even more comfortable if I just put a flexible shaft on it. Ah, uh, I see. So that you don't actually have to hold the tool in your hand. Yeah, it's just now, a little easier. And you could pretend to be like a dentist. <laughs> I might need a little more juice, so it's a variable speed. Right. And this will solve any of my little imperfections. No offense, but looking at the way that you're using that, I don't really want you to be my dentist. Wouldn't it be like little, that movie, I can't remember the name. Yes. Now, if you want to be fussy, you know, you could really get this nice and round and smooth. But I think I'm good to go. It really depends how fussy your fairies are. Exactly. You got it. So there's my door. It's so cute. But what I want to show you quick is the grooves look okay this way. Yeah, they look great. And the whole great. door looks fine this way. But look what happens when you add stain. Because this groove is fresh cut wood, mm -hmm. the stain is going to go in there a lot deeper. Are you using actual wood stain that's purple? Well, I'm using a stain that's in my crafting stash. <laughs> well, but I mean, I love that. It just proves that you don't have to use, you know, like specifically mm -hmm. wood stain. You can really use any medium because the wood will be thirsty and suck it but up. But look what the grooves do when you put that extra stain in They go dark. It, do it does look like planks. You promised it would look like planks and it absolutely does. Now, the last thing to do is figure out your hinges. Okay. And for hinges, I just used some pot metal filigree and decided what I thought would look good. And you could attach the whole thing or you could bake, break a piece off. And then a doorknob, well, that becomes an earring. Oh, so clever. change bits, put a tiny bit in, drill your hole. So Well, take us through the fairy village for a minute and tell us what you've done here. So we've got lots of doors and you know they're at different heights because some people pay for a better view than others. So <laughs> uh, we I cut a log into slices and stacked it with just a hot glue gun, used twigs for the railing, and you have a, the beginnings of a spiral staircase. And what an adorable staircase. All the transoms are mulch and sticks. Just Super cut the cool. mulch now, and is, sticks. Are there any tricks for cutting a round object like a log into size? Do you need to just be really careful? Or? Just be careful. And okay. you, my first mistake, my logs were bigger than my blade was. <gasps> Oh. Now you could cut them on something like a bandsaw, but I had all this set up, so I was like, go get smaller firewood. Um, lots of little doors. Sometimes where the piece you cut out, you can save, and that makes the frame around the door. Cut twigs into little strips and tie them with string, and you've made a rope ladder. And I know you um, even have little lights that light up in case the uh, fairies get lost and need to true. find their way home. They can fly towards it's the true. light. Even the pine cones I sliced using this to get flat bottoms, painted them green uh -huh. to make little trees. You want to make it really inviting because they have lots of real estate choices. This is very cool. Now, uh, where do you deposit your fairy village? Do you leave it at your home or do you walk into the woods and leave it somewhere? Well, if you're going into the woods, you want to make sure that it's okay with that parks and rec. Some actually encourage it. And one thing I've seen people do is they'll carve out the bark to set the door in the bark. Never do that because you're damaging the tree. The bark is like skin and it protects it from disease and insects. So you're better to just attach it on top. You could either attach it mechanically with little screws or nails or even with a wood glue would be fine. And that and doesn't hurt the tree. No, no. And in some parks, it becomes, I don't want to say a contest, but 
people look for it. They'll go there on a Saturday morning or a Sunday. It becomes a destination. Yeah, it's like a treasure hunt. And kids love it. They love looking in the doors, opening the doors. And you can even encourage them to leave a note and put it behind one of the little doors. That's so wonderful and something to search for. I, I think that had I come across a fairy village as a little girl and maybe even today, I would have been immediately entranced and needed to look inside every now, single door. Have you ever seen the little tiny birds? That's what the acorns there with a hole drilled. They're <gasps> birdhouses. So cute. Joe, you have really thought every detail down to the last little bit. I'm, uh, I'm going to go looking for fairy villages the next time I'm in the woods. Enjoy. <laughs>